Okay, today we're going to talk about participles and participial phrases. Um, these are really kind of cool and tricky. They're, they're basically verb forms that act like adjectives. All right, we're going to see what they are. We're going to learn about uh, present participles and past participles, the two kinds of participles. Then we'll journey on to talk about participle phrases and whatnot. You ready? Now, before we get too far into this, you really got to be really sharp on what an adjective is. Because a participle is an adjective. It acts like one. So if you don't know what an adjective is, you're going to be out of luck. So, basically, participles are adjectives. Especially because they do these two kind of things. They do either, they answer the question, which one of a noun, or what kind of a noun. So again, be really sharp on adjectives before we get on with participles. Okay, so the first thing you got to know is that there are two kinds of participles. There's a present participle and a past participle. Present participle, they are a verb form that end in ing, like squeaking, steaming, laughing. These might look similar to something called a gerund. If you watch a gerund video, you'll know what that is. But they're used as adjectives. We'll get to that later. But what you need to know for now is that present participles, they end in ing. Whereas two past participles, they end usually in ed, or the past form of a verb. Um, let's see, gosh, uh, cooked yelled, um, stirred, finished. Those all end in ed, the past form of the verb. And if they're used as adjectives, they'll be past participles. Now, I say usually for past participles because there are some irregular verbs out there. Some verbs in their past tense and differently, um, like shaken, um, broken, paid, torn. Those are irregular verbs. So they don't end in ed, and they just have their own special ending. But essentially, it's a present participle if it ends in ing, past participle if it's the past form of a verb usually ending in ed, but sometimes there's irregular ones. Good. Now that we know that participles act like adjectives, um, modifying nouns, answering the questions which one or what kind, and that we know that participles come in two flavors, past participles or present participles, um, let's see if we can find them in these sentences. First one, do you see that approaching asteroid? ing possibly a present participle. So this might be our guy right here approaching. Now, does it act like an adjective? Does it modify a noun? Hmm. Does it say which one or what kind of something? Oh yes, asteroid. What kind of asteroid? The approaching asteroid. So yes, here's our noun and here's our adjective modifying it. So yes, this is our present participle. Okay, let's check out this one. Would you like my deflated balloon? Hmm, I don't see any INGs, so no present participles. Uh, any EDs? Oh, deflated. This might be a past participle. Only if it acts like an adjective. Is it saying what kind or which one of something? Yes, which balloon? The deflated balloon. Ah, uh, so again, it's acting like an adjective. Modifying a noun, boom, we know it's a past participle. Now before we go too much further, um, I just want to kind of let you know of something to be really careful of here. Um, you might often mix up participles with something else called a verb phrase. And it's very careful here. Um, if you were just humming along, oh here's a sentence, they are baking me a birthday cake. You see an ing, you're like, oh, present participle. Oh, be careful. 
because right before baking, you have this word ok, which is a form of the verb to be. And when you have a form of the verb to be plus another verb form, even if it ends in I and J, this acts like a single verb. This is a thing you do. They are baking me something. Um, so this is not a participle, even though this might look like a participle by itself, because it has a form of to be in front of it, it acts together like a regular verb phrase, just like a regular verb. So beware of to be's. Now that we've got a pretty good handle upon what a participle is, let's briefly talk about what a participial phrase is. Um, notice there's a slight difference in spelling between participial and participle. Anyways, the definition of a participial phrase is that it is the participle and all modifying words that go along with it. Now, words that go along with adjectives, it might be an adverb that goes along with it, might even be a prepositional phrase that goes along with it. Basically, use your intuition. When you spot a participle, ask yourself, are there any kind of words that logically go along with that participle and kind of act like a single thing? It's a bit of a judgment call, but usually your intuition is correct. Let's take a look. Wearing his hipster glasses, Superman is disguised as Clark Kent. First off, can we spot the participle? Hmm. Well, here's one. Wearing. Okay. Now, are there any words that go along with it? Wearing hipster glasses. Okay. We'll call that a whole participial phrase. Now, since these also act just like regular participles, this is an adjective. What does it modify? What now? Ah, modify Superman. Boom. Yep, so here's our participial phrase acting like a single adjective. Now, is there another one? How about disguised? Is that a participle? Perhaps a past participle? No, no, don't forget. There's a form of to be in front of it. Okay, so there we have it. Now, to be honest, the big reason you need to know participles is to know not to mess it up. The way you mess it up is by something called a dangling participles. So in your writing, you should check for dangling participles. And to do that, you needed to know what a participle is. But now that you do, you can check your work for it. Let's see what a dangling participle is. Basically, dangling participle is when the um, participle or participle phrase is too far away from the noun that it modifies. And therefore, the sentence doesn't quite make good sense. Let's take a look at the correct way, and then we'll look at the wrong way or the dangling way. I made jack nachos drizzled with cheese. There's our past participle, drizzled with cheese, the whole participle phrase. All right, and it acts like an adjective. Does it say what kind of or which one of a noun? Yes, which nachos? Boom. Okay, so notice that the drizzled with cheese is very close to the noun it modifies. That is good. Now we're going to see the bad. The wrong or the dangling parcel. Drizzled with cheese, I made jack nachos. Again, there's the participle phrase, the past participle. All right, and obviously, um, it should modify nachos. But it's so far away from nachos that your reader, especially if they're stupid, might get confused. They might think, oh, here's the closest noun. Maybe it modifies that. Maybe I am the one drizzled with cheese. So as you can see, if your participle phrase is too far away from the noun it modifies, it's dangling, and it can cause some confusion. Why would I come out drizzled in cheese, giving some friends some nachos? OK, the last thing we have to talk about is essential and non-essential participial phrases. 
Um, what's the difference, you ask? We'll find out. Sometimes a participial phrase is essential to the meaning of a sentence in order for it to be clear. Sometimes it is not. And the only difference is in punctuating. Non-essential clauses get commas to hook it out. Essential clauses don't. Let's check it out. Here's a non-essential clause in a sentence. My house, located in the middle of the street, is a very fine house. As you can see, the, I've already identified the participial phrase with the past participle located, located in the middle of the street, that's the whole phrase, and I put commas on either side of it. That's because it's non-essential. The sentence, my house is a very fine house, makes sense on itself, I mean, on its own. I mean, you don't need this located in the middle of the street. It's non-essential. You put commas there so you can hook it out. However, this sentence is a bit different. The phrase here is essential. The house located at the end of the street is for sale. So again, there's the phrase located at the end of the street. Um, you'll notice that there are no commas here because it's really essential to the sentence. If it was just the house is for sale, if I just said the house is for sale, you'd be like, what house? That house? That house? That house? No, it's the house located at the end of the street. It's essential to the meaning of the sentence, so it's clear. That's why we do not have commas, we keep it in. So, non-essential commas, essential, no commas. That's it. So that's it, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about participles, how they're a verb form that, ends, that acts like an adjective. Um, you can have either a present participle or a past participle. They both look a little bit differently. Um, and we talked about participle phrases, which is the participle and all the words that go along with it. Um, and finally, we talked about uh, things to kind of be careful of. Don't mix it up with uh, a verb phrase. It's very difficult. Um, just be careful. And finally, we talked about essential and non-essential participial phrases. So there's a lot here in this video. Feel free to rewind, check a few things out, go over it again, and be prepared to ask questions.